I know this is a weird spot to start a video, but today we have three objectives. First, we're going to the gun store. I need to pick up some guns. Two, I actually need to buy some black powder for a future video. I'll give y'all a little hint since y'all watch the vlog channel. You're a little special. Uh huh? Oh yeah, you see that? Kentucky rifle, a legit flintlock. We gotta buy some black powder or this video will never happen. And then last, but definitely not least, third, I've gotta pull out one of my dad's old deer rifles for a future video and we gotta make sure it's ready to rock and roll and sight it in. It's pretty cool. It's an old Remington 30-06. It's a stinking hammer. But first things first, we're heading down to the gun store to pick up the gun and see if we can find some black powder. But before we go anywhere, I'm gonna have to get me a coat because it's cold outside. I'll be back. Boom! All right, we're ready. We're going to the gun store. Yeah, heading into old Bad Woods. Haven't been here in a little bit, but about time. Hmm. What's up? How we doing? We doing? There we go. That's a good thing. What we got cool? What's the coolest thing we got right now? That brown in eight five. Oof, too expensive. Gotta stay over here. Jeez. Got a Desert Eagle? Yeah. Not 50 though? It's actually the both barrels. 40, 45. It's got both barrels. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Oh, what we got here? Six Sour Cross. It's already got the Tango DMR on it. Yeah. It's locked and ready to go. Who's is. that? I think that'll be yours. <laughs> that way I can take down all these moose around here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Deer season take coming that up. Thing out up there. Yeah. Take it right off the wall. Yeah, you could. That one's in 300 wind mag. They just came out with that one. That's the, the Magnum. Right now 300 is the only thing they got, but they'll probably be coming out with other long actions. It's a little heavy, but not terrible. Mm -mm. It's slick. It doesn't kick much though, which is very surprising. Break helps. Yeah, a lot. That's actually not as heavy as I was thinking. Mm -hmm. It's the first focal line I checked it out the other day. I mean. The one I used, we just went elk hunting and not, we used one of those, but he had the tank go six on it. The, and it was like three pound scope. It about killed me. And a big bipod and yeah, I like it. it's That's gonna be a mean, it's gonna be a mean outfit. I yeah, like I'm gonna that. be getting me a uh, go if you can. One upgrade they did was this right here on this one. That mm -hmm. way, whenever you do that, you have a place to put your finger right there if you want to. I like that though. flat part right there. Yeah, it's not as heavy as that other one. Not at all. The bolt might be a little bit, the mag might be a little bit, but besides that, <coughs> uh, that's pretty solid. Pretty sweet. Here's the pistol. It's a compact comp 10 millimeter. It's pretty sweet. One out of kick. Well, shouldn't with the comp. Two mags, 15 rounds, and probably not supposed to show this, but they never said anything, so we're going to. Here's the original, which is longer, as you can see, and does not have a comp and a little bit heavier, which is to be expected. But basically you cut down a little bit of barrel length, cut down a little Picatinny on the end. But besides that, grip looks to be the same. Pretty sweet. All right, guys. So the guns have been picked up. That's a check. I asked about black powder. They had some like equivalent, which is not what I'm looking for. They said even for them to get black powder, they got to have a special permit, which they don't have. So for the black powder, it's looking like I'm just gonna have to go home and uh, order it online, but it's kind of expensive. But for the flint lock, geez, I guess that's just what I gotta have. But I'm hungry, so we're gonna get something to eat. Then we're going home, pulling out dad's old gun and see if we can get that thing sided in. All right, guys, so here's how the day's turned out. I'm not actually taking time to make food. I'm just making this chicken fried rice, but there's a reason. We have more to do today than I originally thought. So we actually have to go to the new farm, set out some deer feed, and set up a trail camera because, I don't know, it's just about that time and we need to start preparing for deer hunting. How many minutes did that say? Hold up. Three minutes. And we've got to do all that before we shoot the guns. So as soon as I get done eating, we're going to the new farm and we're setting out a trail camera. And even before we eat, we got to come into this cagey trail camera and actually put some batteries in it. Cause right now it ain't got none. It may not look the best, but this stuff is actually kind of fire. Whee! 
Now I'm gonna eat this pretty quick because uh, we don't have that much time to waste. We have a lot of things to do today and not a ton of time to do them. And plus, at the end of the day, we might have something else that I kind of forgot to tell y'all about. And uh, it's pretty epic. Alright guys, got the KG trail camera, got two bags of feed back there, you can barely see it. But we're heading on down because we don't have a ton of time today and we got a lot of stuff to do. Step one, set out the feed and set out the trail camera. Let's do that. Actually made it to the new farm and I'm gonna be giving you guys a farm update and a pond update so this is kind of a little extra but first our first place we gotta put out some feed is actually right over here in this field then we're going to the main back and putting out the camera and the feed so right in here all right sweet the feed you already you know we're doing the big and J you still just used to use corn, which worked pretty good, but this stuff works a little bit better and it's actually healthier. So we're using this. It's not supposed to rain for the next two weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff out. And there's that. Now we're gonna move on to the next spot and that's where we're gonna be putting up the trail camera. But first, I do think it's important. Let's check on the pond. Cause a lot of you guys are wondering about it, but none of y'all actually know about it, I guess. I don't really know what I meant there, but you get the point. We're going to the pond. But as for this little field right here, right now we pretty much let it grow up and it's pretty thick, which should be good for rabbits, should be good for deer. And then they do have this path right there and they got a path over there that is this green stuff. So maybe they can eat that. But then also have the thick stuff to where they feel comfortable. I don't really know. That's the plan. We're just going to wait till the fall and see how the deer actually react to it. But being thick like this should help quite a bit with rabbits too. And speaking of deer, there they are. Looks like a big doe and a fawn just chilling right there. <laughs> if we're lucky, they might go back and be eating that feed by the time we get done pouring it out up here. There's a lot of deer here and that's a good thing. Pretty happy about it. Let's see if they're still here. I don't know, I don't see them. Hey, that's not a bad sign at all. And when we look at the big field, we've also let it grow up, like as in not cut it in hay, which once again, should be good for the deer a little bit and should be good for the rabbits. But right now it's just that thick stuff. I think, I don't know. I think I th we're just gonna have to wait a year and see how, see how they like it this fall, cause I don't really know. As for the big pond, here is the big reveal. Let me show y'all our progress. It wasn't very long ago that we actually came out here on the pond bank and done some seeding. That's why you can look down here and you actually see we got grass growing. We didn't want to leave it just bare dirt like it was because, well, over the next few rains and over the winter, it's going to wash away. So we needed to plant some grass so that it can hold all the dirt together. As for the pond itself, not really much has changed at all in quite a long time. And I'm talking like half a year and nothing's changed. And that's because it's not rained and it's not a chance to fill up. Everyone asks me, hey, Hey, how's the pond doing? I'm like, same way it was because we not had enough rain to fill it up. You can even see if you look over there, you can honestly see that the water level is dropping. However, good thing about that is that it's only dropped like a foot and a half over six months. And that's just because it's been super hot and it's just not rained yet. So overall, that's a pretty good sign and it's looking pretty good. We got our homemade structure in there. Grass is starting to grow here. The water level is staying pretty much the same, dropping a little bit, but that's just from it being hot and no rain, which is fair, very fair. And as for the big field out here, it's pretty much just super thick, which isn't a bad thing. Now let's head on back there to one of the food plots that we planted and let let me show you how that's turning out. It ain't good, which is why we're actually putting actual feed out. Yeah, overall looking pretty good. Should be, I mean, it's pretty epic. As we're driving up this way, you're gonna see that over there. And that is actually a pond bank because we built a new pond and you guys haven't seen anything about that yet. And for now, it's gonna stay a secret because that's funny. 
What I will tell you about the pond is that, well, the grass is going pretty good on the bank, but I will also say this, it's not full of water because once again, we not had much rain, but I'm not gonna show you that yet. I'll show you later when it's the right time. What I will show you is this back here, which is the food plot that we created in the middle of the field. It's real thick all back through there. And then right here, it's supposed to be a nice food plot. But as you can take a look, it ain't. This is not a good food plot. This is a dirt garden because well, the same thing as the pond, it's just not rained. So yeah, I mean, take that as what you will. Our food plot ain't being really plotty, if you know what I mean. For the trail camera, I'm gonna sit it on this tree, kind of watching the pond bank. I mean, there's some nice grass there. I just, I just want to know if anything's been using it and walking on the bank. Something light, nothing heavy. And then we're gonna be putting the feed over there, not in front of this camera, which maybe doesn't make sense, but that's okay. All right, there's that. Trail camera has been set. Shoo! The rut's almost here, so if not here already. So I just want to get some cameras out. I mean, I can look down right here, deer tracks all through this right here. So I just I just want to get a bunch of cameras out, even if I don't kill any of them. I at least want to know what's here just to have fun. And maybe next year we can kill one of them. I don't know if I've told you all this yet, but this is the new farm. I don't think I'm actually hunting here this year. I think I'm still going to hunt back where I used to hunt, which is at my house. So I don't know. It's just closer. I don't have to wake up as early. I'm going to save these bucks for next year. Let them get even bigger. I don't know, my boys, that's the plan. Let's go dump out that other thing and feed it. Then we're gonna get home, we're gonna shoot those guns. Dang, man, we got a lot of stuff to do. And the big secret at the end of the day, we're going deer hunting this evening. For the next bag, I'm gonna put it right here on the failing food plot. And see if I can get them coming in here anyhow. Now let's shoot some guns. Now we're on the range. I have the new 10 millimeter. We just went to the store and picked up. And then right over there is my dad's first deer rifle. And we're gonna be discovering it here in just a second. First, we are gonna rip the 10 millimeter and see what we think about it. Okay, are you ready? I'm not, I need ear probe. Okay, now I'm ready. This thing's pretty sick. We'll go ahead and throw a mag in it. I put 10 in here. That should be enough to let me know what I think about it, but. This is gonna be a hammer, okay? 10 millimeters, a big gun. Let's see how bad it, let's see how good it kicks, if any. Oh gosh. Bro, that don't hardly kick. For a 10 millimeter, that's not kicking bad at all. Let me switch you around like this, that way you can see the targets I'm hitting. And that's all I got right there. I hit most of them, but straight up, usually a 10 millimeter don't care to kick you a little bit. This one just vibrates. Like we said in the gun store though, I don't think uh, these are actually for sale right now. So I don't know if you can get one even if you want one, but there it is, 10 millimeter comp. I hope I'm not violating any NDAs or something, but they never said anything about it. So we showed it. Hey, now let's go back to the long range. We're going back a hundred yards. We're pulling out my dad's 30 alt six, and I'm gonna be shooting at some, so should be pretty interesting. Is it sighted in? I highly doubt it, but maybe. Now this was my dad's first and probably only deer rifle. And pretty much the story with my dad and deer hunting, it's a pretty short story, okay? He was never really a hunter growing up. And then whenever he got a little bit older, my mom's brother, which is my uncle, hunts a lot. So he figured he'd try it. He tried it, didn't really care enough for it. And uh, then he pretty much didn't hunt, which makes sense and is totally cool. But this here is the rifle itself. This is a Remington 740. It's a semi-auto 30-06 and this thing, is mag fed, holds like 530-06, has a scope on top. This thing's a hammer, dude. You press two buttons to let the things fly up. This thing's a hammer. I mean, it's a bad little machine. I've shot it a few times, but today we're gonna be looking it over and learning a little bit more about it. First things first, I'm just gonna shoot it standing up and see how bad it kicks. A lot of modern rifles don't kick that bad. One thing I know about older rifles is that they do. Okay, there's a reason 30-06 got a reputation for kicking a little bit. 
and uh, it's probably because the old rifles didn't necessarily handle the recoil that great. I've shot it before, and that's pretty much what I'm alluding to. It kicks like a kicks like a mule, but well, right there it didn't work. There we go. So. I'm just gonna do one shot just straight up. I don't know if I can really aim. Kinda scared I'm gonna scope myself, but either way, here we go. Oh gosh. Yeah, it uh, it kicks a little bit. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see what just happened there? Now, the reason that I'm actually out here trying out this gun is because in a few weeks, we're actually going deer hunting with my dad. And we're gonna try to get him his first buck since he's never really killed one before. He's never killed a deer, I don't think, besides with a truck. So before we take him out deer hunting, I'm gonna give him the option to either use this, which is his first rifle he ever had, or a more modern gun like a Sig Cross that's a uh, lighter weight, doesn't kick as far, a more manageable caliber, better scope, pretty much better everything. But I'm gonna give him the choice, and I just wanna come out here and make sure this one's in good shape, and it works, and so far it definitely does, so. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot these next two shots. Actually, let me sit down and let me make sure and see if this thing's even sighted in. If it's not sighted in, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to, because I don't think he's gonna choose this gun to hunt with. What is in this random bag? This is weird. Comment below, do any of y'all know what these are for? I don't even know what they are, but comment below if you know what they're for. All right, here we go. This is a super nice gun though. It's just not really modern and, well, modern guns have a lot of upside compared to these. That doesn't mean these are bad guns and that you can't kill deer with them. It's just that if we use the Sig Cross, it's gonna be a lot easier to kill a deer. And it's not even that it's easier to kill a deer, it's just that a Sig Cross is a lot more user friendly than a big old Tonka gun like this. But I'm gonna shoot it, I'll see if it's sighted in. All right, that's not sighted in. Let me see about the iron sights. Oh, hold up, dog. The iron sights are sighted in. This gun, one thing really cool about it, I guess my dad set it up this way. I don't know why he done this, but you have the scope and then it's so high off the actual bore axis, whatever, that you can actually look through the bottom of these and see the iron sights just in case it's up close, which isn't terrible because it worked right there. Now, like I was saying, we're actually gonna be showing this gun off in a future main channel video in not too long. And uh, yeah, it's about to be rifle season and we're about to take my dad hunting. So that should be super interesting. And I'm really excited that you guys got to see this first before the main video even came out. It's just a little treat for you guys that wanna watch the vlog channel. Rifle season's coming up soon, but we still have this evening and we're going bow hunting. Let's go. First times of the year hunting, not too bad. We seen a buck, a little smaller than I was wanting to shoot, so we just had to let it go. Click over here if you wanna see a Canadian go deer hunting for the first time, or right over here for when we shot super long range and actually hit the targets. 